Hey guys, yes, this is another 300 blackout trimming jig demonstration. Um, I saw many different iterations online, so I have to thank a whole bunch of people for their different design. Uh, I wanted something I could just plop onto the saw, have it held in place like that, and uh, if I wanted to do something else, I could just take this off and use this as it was originally set up. That's what I wanted anyway. So I came up with this wooden jig contraption. So the key here is this hole has to be big enough for the, the cutoff pieces to drop through if you want to do if you want to go through all this trouble. I think it's kind of fun. Uh, it has to go through sideways and long ways, so make sure it'll fit through both ways. It drops through. And it has to be such that it's close to the end here so that when the case comes through it doesn't fall into the hole backwards because it is back heavy. So that it drops out. And that's if you want to do your separation thing. So anyway, that was my prototype. I put this adjustment on here. It's just a bolt. I can adjust the length this way. I wasn't crazy about it because every time I put the the case in, it kind of hung up on the bolt there a little bit. So I want to come up with something a little bit better. But I did put a guard on it. And then I put this block of wood. Just some, this is all made out of just scrap stuff I had. And I put this block of wood just to, as, a, as a saw stop. Uh, this is just a piece of scrap wood, like I said. I cut out the groove on the table saw, um, leaving enough material on the bottom, the thickness of it, so that you can cut all the way through and not cut this off. So, and then I just put the, the channel, I'll call it, into a dado and a piece of plywood. Anyway, that was my prototype. After I made my prototype and worked out the bugs and tweaks to make sure that it was going to function, I used the same design and created a, another one, very similar, very similar, except this time I used phenolic, which is a dense, hard plastic that is easily machined with standard woodworking tools. I still cut the groove on a table saw. I moved the, the saw stop back here. This is just a piece of phenolic, and it's... Um, just a block that fits right into the little position back there. So, and it lines right up when this gets tightened in. It's in the same position every time, so it's indexed that way. It indexes both off of this face as well as the saw stop. Cut the hole with uh, just a standard drill on a drill press. You could use a handheld drill. And then I use a Dremel to sort of, sort of tweak the hole size to make sure that no matter which way, this is the trickiest part when your cutoffs end up in that configuration. Um, you have to make sure that it'll fall through the hole without getting bound up. Or uh, occasionally you might have a little bit of a brass uh, hanger, you know, a little piece hanging off after you cut it. And it will come down and sort of, sometimes it would flip and then get stuck that way. So you have to make sure that it's big enough that that will fall through in any configuration with maybe a little bit of extra brass hanging off of it. But at the same time, your cut shell case has to bridge the gap pretty easily. And again, this little feature right here, this little ridge, uh, that's what the shell rides against, or the, or the case rather, rides against. And then it needs to be able to drop off the end. Uh, another uh, just similar guard. This one's just screwed in. Um, and this time what I did for my adjuster is I made this out of phenolic as well. So this is what it looks like. It, it came with this sort of a coating on it and I just sanded it off because I liked it better black. You know, <laughs> the little things. Uh, so in here there's a bolt on each side and I sharpened them to a point and then flattened the point off just a touch. So this one is fixed and I can adjust it 
well, I say it's fixed, but I can adjust it for the tension, and this one is for the locking in place. And it, those bolts point just right in a groove along here that I cut also on the table saw. So when I adjust my length, I can just tighten this down, and that's where it stays. To demonstrate functionality, I just loaded up some pre-cut pieces. Not going to bore you with watching me cut brass. <laughs> there plenty of videos on YouTube showing that. So as it uh, as I put in a new piece, the cut-off pieces drop down through the hole and into this container, just like so. You can see that there. They all make it through for the most part. Every once in a while, uh, the blade will spit one out the back, which is fine, but keep them separated. It's, it's nice. And that fell in because it was in backwards. So that's it, guys. Um, yes, another 300 blackout brass cutting jig, but I just thought I'd show you the, uh, the design I came up with. Not my design, 100% obviously. I borrowed a lot of ideas from other people on YouTube. But um, thanks for watching.